Hey everybody, it's Michael Termini with The Game House, and today I am joined by evil geniuses Peter Dunn after a heartbreaking 3-0 series versus C9. Um, so that was a, uh, you know, kind of an interesting series, because I think a lot of people went into it expecting it to be at least closer game score-wise. Uh, what mm -hmm. do you think was, like, the biggest, you know, issue in those games? you think it was that, uh, you know, the drafts weren't good, or you guys just don't think you played that good or, good, or C9 just really showed up way more than you expected. What do you think was the uh, the key issue? Or was it multiple? So we showed, we showed a few weaknesses in the 100 Thief series, and Cloud9 did well to exploit them. Um, but what I will say today is that we kind of just didn't play League of Legends. I mean, um, people maybe can focus on the draft, but the way that EG play the game is we play very, very aggressive. And if you kill one of our players, then we cross map and we get resources on the other side of the map and we play the game at a very high tempo. Mm. Uh, and today we just didn't do it. So the problem is that a lot of our picks that maybe work well together, um, you know, it was especially disappointing in the third game because we have a TF and normally if this was EG at full form during the regular season, TF just goes to the side lane and we dare them to come and kill a player. And if they kill RTF, we cross map and we get more on the other side. Um, but we can't play like that if um, if we're not willing to take the risks and not willing to you know, to, to to put ourselves out there and, and maybe um, at, at least at least force the opponent to make a decision. And today we made the game very easy for Cloud9. We didn't force them to take any decisions, uh, and we kind of just rolled over and died. So. It's very disappointing as a coach. Um, I can't help but feel that maybe there was something that should have been done earlier on the split because um, maybe to prepare ourselves for the stresses of a series like this. So oh. um, that has to come, I guess, on us as a coaching staff. Um, but I think that uh, yeah, we didn't play the game today. Well, like we did. We weren't even playing League of Legends. It felt like we were just waiting to to lose. So I can't help but be disappointed. Do you think there was a uh, a little bit of an emotional residue from that uh, Game 5 game versus 100 Thieves that kind of just stuck around with the team? Or do you think it was just like we just didn't show up today and it has nothing to do with that previous series? Uh, a bit a bit of column A, a bit of column B. Um, I think there was residue there. I think it affected us a bit in scrims this week. Normally, uh, EG as a team, uh, our scrims uh, can go in one of two directions. You know, they, they can... Uh, I'm not going to say we, we always have the best results in scrims, but we have always been a stage team, mm -hmm. without a shadow of a doubt. And, you know, most of our, I would say we win maybe 75% of our scrims, but we have like days where we go 0-5, and it just doesn't matter that we went 0-5. Okay, we went 0-5, what did we learn? Uh, whereas I felt this week, we didn't have that same kind of attitude. Um, and considering that I've known this group of players for the last nine months um this is uh and we've gone through situations like this in the past even leading into the 100 thieves uh, series i can't help but think that there must have been some fallout like something felt off this week mm -hmm. um and i'm not sure what it was um i'm going to be honest uh cloud nine cloud nine played they played pretty standard they didn't pull out any surprises maybe the not turning game three or but they didn't really pull out any other surprises that we weren't expecting. It's just we, um, it's just that yeah, we didn't play the game today. So I want to ask about the two jungle situation. Um, mm -hmm. What made you guys decide after game one to uh, pull out Sven Skarin and put in contracts? Oh, I remember we talked about this. Yeah, we, we did. Right? But so I'm, when, I, when, yeah. When the season ended, I'd give you a more in-depth response. Yeah. So I guess I can give a bit of an in-depth response. Here. Um, I think that basically, how would I describe our jungle situation? Um, maybe some of your listeners or some of your readers um, know about EA Sports games. And in an EA Sports game, you know, uh, game, you like have uh, a kind of a rating for your players, you know, for, for FIFA football or something, you know, you have like a, the best player in the world is like a 98, right? Or something. And uh, if we count as like the best player in the world being like way, best jungler in the world being way on RNG, uh, and we called him like a 98. Mm. Uh, I think both of our junglers were comfortably in the top five in NALCS, like maybe even higher. Um, but maybe, maybe you could say something like Dennis was like maybe 83 and 
uh, uh, stone scale, sorry, and contracts are maybe an 81. Um, but there were contracts playing much better with what our team wanted them um, and needed them because there's a, there were a lot of skill sets that Svenskere had and a lot of his strengths were duplicated elsewhere in the team. Whereas a lot of things that a lot of contracts um, strengths were not duplicated elsewhere and he played a lot better. Uh, I will say that we barely lose a, we barely lose any scripts of contracts. Um, he's, he was had a 100% record in regular season um, and has been I mean, he's basically been exceptional. Um, I, I think that Sven Skeren had. Um, I think I think we we gave Sven Skeren a lot of script time, but it was simply just the case of the contract was was just playing better, um, and we we he just made the team function better as a, as a team because he's often the one who's calling for those cross map plays, right? So 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 sometimes uh, I think. Sven Skeren uh, is somebody who is a very good team player, uh, and if the team is calling for certain things, he will he will follow the team call. Whereas sometimes what we need as a team is to say no, don't do this thing, do this other thing instead. Uh, and I think that contracts having that uh, helped fix some of our indecisiveness in the game. Obviously, it didn't work out so well today, um, but. Uh, he provided a counterbalance when you have a team that has multiple strong voices pulling you in different directions. You know, we have Ignar, we have Juzuke, we have Impact, they all have their own plans. Sometimes you don't need somebody else to have a plan. You need somebody to go and say, do this plan. Or, no, that's not a good idea. Let's do this other thing. Right? And I think that's what Contracts provided for the team. Um, and that's why he was playing the majority of games at play. Both script performance and uh, in terms of how he functioned in the cops. So I got to ask then, uh, may maybe it's you know a little bit of an impertinent question, but why not just stick with one jungler and go with the two jungle system if Contracts was performing better in scrims and better with like the internal data that you guys had? Uh, why was um, it? Uh, why was it that way? Simple answer. Um, maybe it's because I learned. Uh, Maybe it's because I, I learned how about coaching systems and things like this in China. Uh, for me, um, I felt that it was that Sven Skeren had earned the right to play. And like, it didn't matter how scrims were, and it didn't matter how he qualified within the team. He'd earned the right to play uh, in playoff. Mm -hmm. like, he played a fantastic regular season. He, I felt he got a bit snubbed on MVP votes for the, for the main team. I think he's a fantastic player. Um, I think that he just wasn't the best fit for our team. I think that even, you could argue, even on pure objective metrics, if you were to compare both of them in isolation, that maybe he, maybe he, he may have been the better player, although mm, I think they both have their strengths and their weaknesses. I don't, I don't Contracts, think. generally speaking, stats-wise, was ahead of Sven Skaren. Uh, yeah. Yeah, throughout yeah. the split. But, but what I would say for, I would, what I would say for Sven Skaren is that he had done all of this work over the course of the year. He performed at a very, very high level, and he deserves the right to play in that. Right? And especially in a series where we're 2-2 um, against 100 Thieves, why did we sub him in against 100 Thieves? Because he's a, he's a veteran who, who plays at a very high level um, and uh, has been in that situation many times before um, and performed well. And in fact, the game 5 against 100 Thieves, we kind of had a poor performance, but you cannot deny that Sven Skerin almost carried us there. Yeah, he and played amazing. He played fantastic in that series, and that's why he played game one today. Um, uh, I yeah, I feel I feel maybe as a as a team we let him down a little bit. Uh, but after game one, um, I was listening to our comms backstage and our our plans, and it was clear we needed to make the switch. And again, not because I think that Sean Skerin is a bad player. Uh, it's just that we, we needed somebody to kind of be the bad guy in the team and say we're doing this. Right? Mm. And game two, uh, we almost won the game. We were four and a half game goal ahead. We should have been able to close that game. Uh, and I think a lot of credit for that must go to contracts. Uh, and I think he's done a fantastic job in the course of this year. All right. I'm going to throw one final question at you. I'd love to ask about the zigs from last week, but let's let's go past that. I mean, we, we can we can. Talk uh, okay, about okay. If you want to go over it real quick, that's fine. Because uh, I have another question I'd like to ask. But if you want to go over it briefly, be my guest. I mean, all I say is Danny has one of the best zigs in. Um, in the league, 
uh, and enmity prospects of failures, prospects of failures. And if you have, if your star AD carry, and let's be clear, Danny is at this point, I think, a star AD carry with justification. Comes to you and says, "Any team respect to failures, put in six. I'm going to carry this game on the line. You put him on six, right? Yeah. I mean, like, <laughs> I mean, people. A lot of people said had comments of like, oh, you know, what kind of a coaching staff are you? You know, he's just hard carrying the game on Tristana, and you putting him on six on the last game. I mean, I'm pretty sure Danny thought that he was going to smash that game on six. Yeah. And he actually didn't have a bad game. He yeah. No, he was fine. But LeBlanc, LeBlanc was too far ahead, and if LeBlanc is really far ahead, uh, and six, you can't really." Play. And it also Obviously. it also helped you with the the top side that was struggling a little bit more in that series too, correct? Uh, with him on a yeah. you know a more independent bot laner, or um, a little bit. But I think I think it was more the case of um, after after game four, I we had a conversation internally, and we, what do you feel like playing? Right? Like here's how the draft is going to work in this situation. How what do you feel? Right? Do you feel do you feel another Tristan again, or or what do you feel? And to be clear, like people will take this as me criticizing Danny and like say, oh, he shouldn't have gone six. No, he should definitely have gone six. Like Danny six. One of the reasons why people are playing so much six in NA is because Danny's destroying them in schools of six, right? Like he's a fantastic one. So, so, so I, I, I didn't think about it like that. Oh, you may have noticed how nine ban six every single game today right? because <laughs> he played six against them. So, so yeah. So, so I felt, I felt, I felt. Uh, Maybe some of that criticism was a bit unfair, um, but but you know, like uh, I I if if he came up to me again and said pick these things again, I would I would have picked these things again. Mm. That's that situation. Every single time. All right, final question here. Uh, you went into the year. Uh, I think it was in a Travis Gafford interview. You described it as you're building the future of EG, but that doesn't mean you can't contest for worlds. Mm -hmm. uh, and I kind of want to get your final thoughts on that at the end of the year because I think it's fair to say you did both quite well. Uh, you know, you guys were one game away from making Worlds. Uh, and, uh, you know, you have this new rookie who won Rookie of the Year in Danny. Um, you have, like, this great amateur and academy scene. So I'm just curious through your perspective, how do you think this year's gone? Uh, not just LCS, but for the future of Evil Geniuses, for the future of the brand, for the future of the team. Uh, I'm, I'm going to be honest. I, I'm, I'm a bit embarrassed. Uh, like, uh, if, if today hadn't happened and we just lost me two last weekend, and you know, maybe maybe you could be a, be a bit of a what if. And this week feels a bit like an addendum. Um, you know, it's a asterisk. You know, could have competed for worlds. Asterisk lost three zero to Cloud Nine in the gauntlet. Um, you know, maybe if, if today didn't exist, I would be a lot happier. Um, but all I can say is, you know, this is part of why I'm here and part of why EG brought me on is to help this team find long term sustainable success in the league tomorrow. I'm not even going to take a day off. Tomorrow I'm going to be working with Academy for scrims uh, until the end of Proving Grounds. Um, hopefully. I, I hope I hope I'm in a good mental state. But if not tomorrow, then day after tomorrow. Um, but I'm not going to take more than one day. But I'll probably, I'll probably start tomorrow. Uh, and, um, you know, it's it's been really great to see people develop both through both of our youth programs. Obviously, we had Danny, who's the marquee guy coming up through through amateur, but also contracts, fought his way up through academy. And, you know, he, he developed as a jungle lord this year, he developed his communication, and he also earned his place. So it's, he, it shows that the systems are working, but obviously, you know, talent development is a long-term process. Mm. Uh, you know, it's hard to judge how successful we are until, you know, 20, 2022, uh, 2020. I just got the message saying we got to wrap up. I don't mean to cut okay. you off, uh, but I, I, I appreciate the opportunity to talk, uh, you know, and you guys had a great year. You had a great run and it was really fun watching. I know that's probably no solace, but, uh, you know, it was, it was very entertaining. So uh, that's Thank all. You very much.